it is Monday, August 7th, and you are watching the Dojo Live recap show. My name is Kim Lantis, and joining me is my faithful co-host, America Guerrero. Always ready. Always ready. It doesn't look like that, but I'm always ready. (laughs) It does. Uh, So yes, what do we do here on the recap show? We talk about the great shows we had last week um, to give you our feedback and our ideas, our takeaways from the great conversations we have here on Dojo Live. Of course, if you didn't get to watch them, you can check out all of our shows at our website, dojo.live. Check us out on our socials. YouTube as well. Uh, and of course, we're going to introduce what we've got coming up this week for you as well. So first, let's talk about last week. Last week, we had two great shows. First up was Scott Stewart, who is the CEO of Turnaround Management Association, also known as TMA. And he joined us to talk about the dramatic disruption of Silicon Valley. You know, with everything that's been going on, layoffs, bank closures, etc. the question is, are we facing a meltdown? So he got to talk all about that, uh, and we'll get into that in just a moment. But last week's second show was with Lori Schaefer, CEO of Digital Wave Technology, and she was talking about riding the digital wave, unleashing AI's potential for products. So let's kick it off with Scott's show. What was your takeaways, America? Well, we talk about the impact of AI and automation on the economy and jobs. Scott acknowledged that change can be challenging, but he emphasized the potential benefits of technology adoption in advancing society. So no, Silicon Valley is going to survive this. Actually, he compared the readiness of society to embrace technology during the pandemic to the current digital digitalization stage and the fourth industrial revolution. So it was a really good conversation. There are occasions that I feel afraid of this new technology taking mm-hmm. away my job, but it's just <laughs> about adoption, right? Yeah, but, but not only that, it's just about this introduction of change and how uh, he talked a lot about the why, like what's happening, how it happened. And also I think there's just this lot of comfort in saying this is normal right? Um, mm-hmm. Financial ups and downs are normal. I think the one that we're currently experiencing was actually a long time coming, which can make mm-hmm. the current younger generations a bit nervous because it's their first experience kind of with something like this, mass layoffs and things at the scale. Um, so it was mostly like, a, take it easy. This is normal. We're going to come through. And also, of course, some tips and advice of how to go through that. One of which you already touched on was just being adaptable, change. Uh, he did have some takeaways at the end. I think the first one was... Um, don't panic, right, was the first thing. Uh, no, the, yes, it was don't panic, and then it's ask for help, and oh. mm-hmm. I think was the, the other one, and um, yeah, be open to change. I think it was really great about his show, too, was the generational components that he was able to introduce, and how we're at a very interesting time with more than four generations coming together um, you know, the first one being where technology before there anything like software technology even existed. And then the current younger generation of like, they don't even know what life is without it. Right. And so there's this really cool um, combination of generations yeah. uh-huh. and how all these conversations need to take place. And so that encouragement of no matter who you are, what generation you're from, to be open to learning and discussing and making changes together. Um, And a common thread, I think there was this uh, continuous education and knowledge sharing, which was a lot that came up with Lori's show as well. Exactly. This company, well, it's part of this wave of digitalization with AI. I thought that this, well, let's talk about the show, right? So she's talking about AI and products and how Mm -hmm. we can utilize this technology in new ways that I wasn't able to imagine that this year in 2023, we were able to create videos, but I saw that in TikTok, but actually <laughs> meaning of doing it, I didn't, I didn't know that it was possible right now. So the wave is here. It's not coming and we just yeah. need to do that. The well. question I think was a lot of the AI applications that she mentioned, the question was like, whoa, 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 is this real? This is actually happening right now. We're utilizing it in these ways, or this is what we're expecting in the future. And exactly. Says, no, no, this is real. It's happening. And their focus at Digital Wave is to utilize AI that leads more specifically retailers, I think, to profitable um, product sales, process efficiency, higher customer satisfaction. Um, and a lot of that is through AI, like allowing AI to create different content in different spaces across different mediums um, to tell that here's the cool part to still have this unique voice 
um, and similar stories all throughout, right? So that there's that whatever makes a company themselves, right, isn't lost. And I think there was a really cool uh, point in her conversation, uh, what you alluded to earlier, I think this AI is taking my job. And she says, no, not at all. There's no replacement. The human component is still very necessary um, in this terms of quality assurance, quality checks, the final say. Um, But really, I think one of the numbers we just threw out there, it wasn't like the exact number, but for example, um, people who are running these campaigns, you know, content creators and product mm-hmm. managers and whatever, instead of maybe being in charge of 10 campaigns, I can now be in charge of 100, right? Um, so it's just making everything so much faster and so much easier. And she was, I think she even threw out numbers like, you know, big retailers like Target and people, Amazon, Amazon's probably even more, but like, I think she said 6 million different products that we're trying to, it's you know, crazy. advertise for and have this same story for it. And so their applications of, of AI there um, are really, really incredible at Digital Wave. Uh, she also, I think her words of wisdom leaned into, I don't remember the exact phrase that she said, but it talks about embracing curiosity, right? That oh, she yeah. as an individual is constantly reading, constantly keeping up on things. And I thought this was really cool with, you know, generative AI and chat GPT. One of the ways in which she's personally utilizing was new to me is uh, copying and pasting transcripts of shows like Dojo Live or, you know, articles from magazines or newspapers or wherever and asking for a summary and then allowing the AI to create that reduced component for her to help her determine if it's really worth her time or not um, to read the whole thing. So I thought that was a really cool application as well. We should ask her to come back because I remember that in backstage, he wanted us to touch or ask her about women in tech. So that is a conversation that we should continue with her. Of course, all women in tech, and it's 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 a great great story, um, super fun. So check out those two last ugh, those two shows from last week. Um, this week we actually have two shows coming up as well tomorrow as well as Wednesday. Who will we who <sighs> slow it down, Kim? Who <laughs> will we be talking with? Yes, we're going to have a conversation with Bruno Beer, co-founder and CEO at the company Nift. Tiffy, Niftify. I think it's Niftify. Niftify, yeah. And the topic is going to be about the Bitcoin era. Will blockchain and AI be forced be useful to human beings? Yeah. We haven't be talked about Bitcoin, useful, right? right? And I think, and I think this idea: will it be forced but useful? And we probably know the answer, and it's yes, because I think even Scott's show last week was like, yes, yes, AI is mm-hmm. coming. There's no stopping it, right? So exactly. it'll be a really cool continuation. Um, I'm sorry, uh, we've got Bruno's show for when tomorrow, right? Yes. Eight. All right. Perfect. And then on Wednesday, we're going to follow it up with Jonathan Ross Friedman, co-founder and CEO of the company of Super Social. How does the metaverse Mm -hmm. redefine brand realities and drive customer engagement by providing immersive and interactive platforms that transcend conventional marketing methods? It is a long question. That means that it's (laughs) going to be a long conversation. Uh, no, just a half hour as per usual, ah, right? Yeah. 10 o'clock right. a.m. Pacific. We'll see you tomorrow and Wednesday right here on Dojo Live. Have a great week, everyone, and bye for now.